Alright, so while I was gone, a lot has happened in Mexico, and I wanted to bring you this first. Immigrant rights attorneys and journalists have been denied entry into Mexico. So two U.S. immigrant rights attorneys and two journalists who have worked closely with members of a migrant caravan in Tijuana said they had been denied entry into Mexico in recent days after their passports were flagged with alerts by an unknown government. Their stories are nearly identical. All four report being detained by Mexican immigration authorities while trying to enter the country and eventually being turned back because the authorities said their passports had been flagged. It is unclear which government or governments, if any, might have issued the alerts. The U.S. State Department declined to comment Friday and the Homeland Security Department and Customs and Border Protection did not respond to requests for comment. The Justice Department directed the Times to Mexican officials. Representatives for the Mexican government did not respond to requests for comment. If you ask me what's going on, I think Mexico is trying to handle this or loophole its way out of the U.S. immigration um, co uh, contract. And if not that... United States made a deal with Mexico uh, uh, below the table. You know what? Stop sending um or we're going to could you guys stop uh, receiving you know th this help that the migrants are getting and and you know these journalists to expose what's going on with the migrants. I mean, I don't know, something's weird happening. Something's weird happening. Obviously for right now, we can only guess, but we're making some pretty good guess, right? I mean, I thought I think it's Mexico. I think it is Mexico because the UN the UN wouldn't want this, you know what I mean? Well, maybe the journalist part, but the immigrant rights attorneys, the UN would, would like that. So, I'm telling you, either the US or Mexico made a deal with each other, or Mexico just, with being being a country, they're just, they're just, uh, they're just now figuring out that, you know what, this migration stuff is, is not good for the country. So, they probably did this, but who knows, maybe US did make a deal with Mexico. On to the next one. All right. And in Arizona, Border Patrol agents, humanitarian crisis at the Arizona-Mexico border. So right here next to Mexicali, which is like about two hours away, Yuma, illegal immigrants are jumping over a 16-foot tall fence, digging holes to crawl beneath it, and even using tools to cut through the razor-sharp barbed wire. With, I mean, this is the reality Border Patrol agents in Arizona are dealing with, even areas that have a wall. Thousands of miles away from the political bickering and partisan standoff over border security, the humanitarian crisis at the border is what agents see day in and day out. Border patrol agents at the Yuma and Tucson sectors have been working around the clock to catch migrants who have breached the border and drug smugglers who bring massive quantities of narcotics into the country. And lately, they're seeing many migrants who suffer severe injuries in their desperate journey to make a life in America. Using the start of 2019 as an indicator, Yuma agents said they catch near anywhere from 100 to 200 illegal immigrants a day. It's not uncommon to have more than 1,000 in a week, said Agent Justin Callinger, an operations officer with the Yuma Sector Police Affairs Office. We see the broken ankles, the broken vertebrae. We've, we've seen it on children, on teenagers, young adults. Hayes described the heartbreak of seeing a three-year-old ch child fall from the top of a 16-foot-high wall in the past three weeks. Holy crap. Thankfully, the child's injuries were minor, but agents say a 14-year-old girl who, who took the risky leap suffered multiple broken bones in her vertebrae and had to be flown into an Arizona hospital for treatment. What the fuck? Are you serious? Damn, bro. These fat I'm telling you, that's what I don't like, man. That's that shit that I don't like. Border Patrol agents say career human smugglers who work for car cartels in Mexico are to blame for a lot of this human... No, they're not, dude. All right, it's the migrants alone, bro. How they're trying to put... All right, it's the... You know, it's business for cartel. Like, cartels, if they come, like, it's, fuck it. You know what I mean? They're going to work with them. They're not going to turn away business. Just like how they're using them now for, for bait, you know what I mean? They'll send a, a group out of migrants and then they'll send their real fucking cargo of, of, of drugs. Sorry for my words. But the, the cartel isn't to blame. I mean, these guys are to blame the migrants. Let me just put that straight. These, even, these individuals that cross into the U.S. illegally, they're relying on smugglers that guide them. They pay these smugglers anywhere from 500 to 5000 Once they get here, they do a lot of times. They do that, they do a lot of times, I don't get that. What the smugglers tells them to do, oh, okay. He tells them to get inside the water and swim, they'll do that. He tells them to climb a tall ladder and jump across the border wall. What do they know any better? 
said Border Patrol agent Jose Garibay, with the Yuma Sector Police Affairs Office. The Yuma Sector of the U.S.-Mexico border is an area that runs about 276 miles. The agent said only 117 miles of that stretch contains infrastructure. The rest is made up of rugged mountain terrain, the Colorado River, and sand dunes, and rural farmland. Floating fences that can move up and down the Imperial Sand Dunes pedestrians fencing Normandy barriers and steel walls were all built to prevent illegal immigrants from entering the U.S. However, based on videos released by Border Patrol agents in recent months, it is clear those barriers are not deterrent for determined migrants willing to risk life, limb, and in some cases, their dignity to get into America. We've heard stories from individuals that have been violated and raped in some instances by smugglers and invi individuals that they've traveled with, Gadiwe said. ABC 15 asked agents what type of border security measures they would like to see in Yuma. Agents agreed they need more than the bo than the wall built in 2005, which is c which is continually breached by illegal immigrants. What we want is a wall system, and that comes with technology, not just a physical barrier. We need remote video surveillance and ground sensors so we can detect if someone is breaching the wall, Kalinja said. Agents also feel that a taller wall that goes not only up, but deep on the ground would prevent many of the risks daring illegals ent illegal um, entries they're seeking. Adding 10 more feet is definitely a deterrence factor. There have been studies that have been done that shows you to get a certain height, individuals no longer want to make the attempt to drop off the border, Kirby said. For those migrants who are fleeing from poverty and violence in their home in their home countries, agents stressed there are better ways to present their cases, ways that are illegal and will not endanger their lives or endanger their bodies. They don't want to run from us. They want to be processed and come into the country, Kalinja said. Our goal is for these people to understand that there is a right way to do this. They go to the port of entry, they ask for asylum, and then they're granted it. I mean, they're granted or not. The White House has announced a new policy in which migrants who enter illegally will be taken to Mexico and, hold, and told to seek asylum there. Migrants are already being turned away in San Diego, but in Yuma, agents said they had not received that directive yet. So they haven't received that, um, that order, I guess, to stop them and send them back to Mexico while they go for their, while they're, you know, they're, I guess, treated for their asylum cases or, you know, asylum cases are processed. Given the fact that that is, that is um, what's going on right here, these agents are right. It's technology. It's all about technology now in these days. You know, that, that simple border ain't going to do crap, man. You guys you guys still think that that border is going to do something. I mean, it might do something, but they're still going to try to rip through it. They're still going to jump over it, dig more on the bottom of it. Like, bro, come on. Um, besides that, they're right. You know, a, a wall will be effective with technology enhancing it. So you might have uh, ground sensors, uh, drones, maybe five of them pass in a certain area. Because there's certain areas that are hot zones, you know, sometimes even blind spots. Like this man said, Kalinger, he said that there's areas where there's no wall, where it's just dunes and mountains and rural, you know, rural areas. So in those areas, bring in the drones, sensors. You guys might kid around, but landmines. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But that's about it. Okay, and in other news, Tijuana, the citizens, and the mayor have requested for the National Guard to be approved fast. They're siding with the National Guard. Why? Because in Tijuana, they had a new record high of 220 executions. Yeah, that is a lot. In the last 26 hours, it was registered 11 assassinations and attacks in against the police in the city. Uh, the mayor, the mayor of Tijuana, Juan Manuel Gastelum, informed the Secretary of Public Security Alfonso Durazno. Se comunicó para darle la noticia. So this is this is a, um, I think Mayor Mayor Gastelum's word right here. So in the truth is that it gives me a lot of a lot of hope. Where like I really like that the citizens have you know have came, have come out and said that that, that they've had it. Because this this morning, I have received confirmation from part of the federal government that we will receive help. So the government has heard the people of Tijuana and have has noticed the the high rise in crime. Like it's crazy out there. El alto indice de homicidios in Tijuana. So um, out of the whole year, 220 already is for is for you know homicides. So this this obligated the the federal government to further approve the, the National Guard earlier than requested. And to resolve this, they're going to send 1,800 elements of federal police, the military, and Marines 
to go help with the problem of high rising crime in Tijuana because it is crazy out there right now. It's crazy out here in Mexicali too. It's crazy all along the border. It's, shit's happening. All right, so more more dollars are migrating southwards, which um, the title reads: Remittances hit a new record high of 33 billion in 2018. Increase attributed to U.S. President Trump's stance on illegal immigration and a strong economy. So remittance is basically when you have someone in the United States or in a country, and from that country you're sending money to a different country. Um, not, Not necessarily the country, but, you know, to a wife, to a family, to a brother, you know, something like that. So for an example, like we're going to talk about now. If in America I have um, a brother, a sister, a mom, or a friend, and they send me money and I'm in Mexico, that is a remittance. You know what I mean? I hope I said that right. So here we're going to go and read the article. Some of you guys might, might love me for this. Some of you guys might hate me. You know, But it's, it's news nevertheless. You know, I bring you guys the, the real shit. The fear of deportation fed by United States President Donald Trump's hardline rhetoric on immigration and a strong U.S. labor market and economy drove the remittances from Mexicans outside the country to an all-time high in 2018. Mexicans working abroad, mainly in the United States, sent U.S. $33.48 billion to Mexico last year, an increase of 10.5% over the 2017 figure, according to the Bank of Mexico, Banxico. Remittances were sent in a, in a, in 103.9 million separate transactions. So I just want you guys to hear that real quick again. The remittances were sent in 103.9 million transactions. So those are a lot of transactions. You know, a lot of people are sending money back, um, like back to Mexico or, or to Mexico. Sorry. Um, a six percent increase on 2017 figure, and each one was an average of 322 dollars compared to 309 the year before. So it's like about, I don't know, $20, $22 more, um, $16 more, I don't know. <clears throat> Almost 98% of remittances were sent by electronic means and just over 94 came from the United States. The total dollar amount sent to Mexico made by remittances is the country's second largest foreign country earner after auto exports, which totaled around $142 billion. Just seven states received half of all the remittances. Sam Michoacan took in just under 3.4 billion, followed by Jalisco with almost 33, 3.3 billion. Sorry, Guanajuato with just over 3 billion, Mexico State with 1.9 billion, and Oaxaca with 1.7 billion, Puebla with 1.7 billion, and Guerrero with 1.6 billion. It's a lot of money. Financialist analysts say that Trump's tough stance on illegal immigration has encouraged Mexicans in the United States to send more money home. And I just want to clear something. Uh, you know, let's see if they, they say it right here. The Mexican government estimates that around 12 million Mexicans live in the United States, and about half the number are there illegally. Analysts at the Mexican bank Banorte say they expect they expect the flow of remittances from the United States to remain strong in 2019 because the fundamentals of the U.S. economy are strong. However, the International Monetary Fund (IMF) is predicting growth in that country, which will allow to to sorry in that country will slow to 2.5 percent this year compared to 2.9 in 2018 so they're talking about united states which could slow the growth of remittances to below the the double digit spike seen in 2018 but anti-immigration rhetoric is likely to continue to to encourage remittances banorte said providing that no measures are taken to limit them uh, don't give him any ideas. <laughs> While a candidate for President Trump threatened to cut off remittances to Mexico, proclaiming that such a move would pressure the Mexican government to just cough up a one-time payment of five or ten billion dollars for his border wall, however, the United States government has never tried to put the plan into place. And according to a migration expert, it would likely backfire on the U.S. president. My first reaction was, "That sounds counterproductive." Andrew Seeley, the president of the Migration Policy Institute, told the Washington Post last month. Mexican migration to the United States is dropping in part because Mexican migrants are sending money home so more Mexicans can have a dignified life, he said. Cutting off remittances would potentially disrupt lives in Mexico and result in more migration to the United States. This is partially right. The other part of it is right is that, you know what, they're just sending money home because they never know when they're going to get deported. They never know when that's it. They've had enough of Trump. Or, you know what, the Americans are making fun of them too much or or, uh, life changes. You know what I mean? 